Hey guys, welcome to Data Talkies. Hope you are doing fine. So in this video, we will be learning how to download Spark on your laptop and then run the PySpark in local mode. Uh, so we can directly go to the link here. So this is the Apache website from where you can directly download the Spark. Uh, you can select the Spark release, which is 3.3.1. And then we will be checking the package type, which is pre-built for Hadoop. And then you can just click on the uh, download Spark here. This is taking you to this website. You can click here and then it will start the downloading process here. So you can see the downloading process has been started. So I'm going to pause this because I have already downloaded the Spark on my laptop. And here you can click show in the finder. And then here, so you can see in my download directory, it was downloading Spark, which I just paused. I can just move it to trash because I have already downloaded it here. So what we can do is I can just double click on this uh, tarbill file. And what it will do is it will expand the tarbill, which will contain all the Hadoop related binaries we will be needing to run the Pi Spark on your laptop. So once the expanding is finished, we will see all the files and directories and each file has its own purpose that why it's there. Okay, so expanding is finished. You can just check the content here. As you can see, there are like multiple directories like bin is there, data, examples, Python. So these are all the different directories which is needed to run the Spark for different purposes. So one of the main is bin. So bin is basically the bin contain all the executable files, we can say, or scripts, which is need to interact with Spark. Like for instance, all your interactive shells, like PySpark, Spark shell, Spark SQL, these are all the interactive shells, which you can start and then start running all your Spark related operations on a local mode, right? So basically bin contains all those scripts. So now we have already downloaded the Spark here. So let's just try to run the PySpark now and then see what happens. So for that, we can directly go to the terminal here and I'm already in my downloads directory. If I present working directory, you will see I'm in downloads and here we downloaded the Spark. What we can do is we can do change directory to Spark and then do ls. It will list all the files which we just saw in the uh, download folder. And then this is the bin. It So what we can do bin and then run pi Spark interactive shell and hit enter. Okay, so it's complaining. What, what does it mean? The error is saying the operation couldn't be completed, unable to locate a Java runtime. What does it mean? It means when we say, like when we say, okay, start the PySpark, PySpark is looking for Java runtime. One thing to note here is Scala is written, sorry, the Spark is written in Scala, but it runs on Java virtual machines. So if you want to run PySpark, it's a prerequisite that you should have a Java on your laptop. And then for Spark this, you need to have Java 8 or newer version to run the Spark, right? So it means they are saying you do not have Java on your laptop. So let's just install Java first. And then what you can do here is quickly check if you have Java locally, just to like double sure like what it gives. So Java version, it's, a, it's giving the same error that it's not able to locate the Java runtime. Okay, so let's just download the Java. In order to download Java, again, you can go here. I have, so this is the uh, official Oracle Java download page. Here you can just quickly say, they are saying Java 19 and 17 available. So you can first define like where you want to install the Java. I'm gonna say Mac OS. And then from the, I have selected Java 17 here. I mean, you can do Java 19, 17. So for example, I selected Java 17. And then on the Mac OS, I'm, they are giving multiple options. So we can decide how we want to download the Java. I'm gonna go with the DMG installer. So here you can just click and then what, we, what it will do is it will start downloading the DMG file on your download directory again. So what you can do here, here you can see, you can just click show in the finder and it will take you to the download directory. So here you go. So this is like where it started downloading the Java 
and then once the downloading is finished we can just install the java and then we can and then we can try to uh, run PySpark again so let's just see what happens okay so this is almost finished Okay, so you can see the DMG file here. So what you can do is just double click on this DMG and then what it will do is it will, yeah, it will start opening the DMG files for you. And then we can start the downloading process. Here you can double click on the JDK 17.0.5 package. And then when you double click this, it will take you to a near window. Yeah, so you can see when you double click, it is giving you to install JDK 17.0.5. Just click continue and then you can close this one and then you can bring here and then continue install. It's, it's asking you for your laptop password and you can just type in your password and then click install software. So now it will take um, a minute to do all the validating, like all the validating packages and everything before installing it on your laptop. So, yep, it's almost finished. Okay, so install succeeded. So now you can just close this. And then now after the installation has been done, you can just remove this DMG file to just save your disk space. So you can just say, move to trash. Now we have installed the Java, right? So what we can do here is let's just go back to your terminal and then again run bin PySpark. Let's see what happens. Yeah, okay, so we are done. So it means they are saying like it's all uh, PySpark shell has been started. Now you can see these arrows, right? It means you are in the PySpark now and you can start running all your commands here. And then there are a few things to note. So first of all, they are, us they are saying using Python version 3.8.9. And then, I mean, it depends, right? So here they are saying Spark and Test Web UI is available at this. So what does it mean? It means they are saying by default, web UI is always available on port 4040. So this is this is the by default port, right? And what is this? This is basically is the driver node. So the IP address of the driver node. Now we are running the PySpark locally, like on your laptop. So driver node is on the like the IP address of your laptop because driver is running in this shell also in shell itself, right? So this is the IP address of your laptop. So they are, so what, what does it mean? They are saying the web UI is available at this port of your laptop's IP address. So it means you can just say, copy this and then go to the browser and then here, just click this UI and see what happens. Okay. There you go. So it means this is your look like this is on the browser, but it's like saying this is the IP address and the it's running on the 4040. The web UI is here and you can see the user is Ashu and then there is I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm running nothing in the shell. So stages, you can go to executors tab here. So executors will show you that there is only one active node, which is your laptop, right? Because it's a single machine. So it will be just it will show just one. Um, so let's just, let's just wait and see what happens. It's a bit slow. I don't know. Okay, cool. So they're saying active node one because it's your local laptop. And when you will run this spy spark on clustered environment, then it will show you, then the, then there will like more executors depending on the resources or whatever you're going to use. But this video is only for downloading the spark and running spy spark locally. So it just like, it's just showing this, but in another video, we will be like checking like how to run the PySpark spark on the cluster environment. So yeah, I think that's it for this video. We PySpark spark is running you can start running all the uh, operations here. Thank you.